Hello, everybody, and welcome to the White Hatter YouTube News Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Darren. Uh, let's get into some news topics. In the news, in the news. First news topic. Word all. As Word a, all. As a quick news topic. Mom uh, plays that every day. Really? Yeah, every oh. day. Uh, so Wordle, uh, which has been bought by the New York Times for multi-million dollars. <laughs> um, Let me guess. Go ahead. Well, they now own it, so yeah. they've now added their own ad trackers and whatnot into Go the product. figure. So, right? I mean... It's a free product. It's a free app. Um, They're going to monetize it, right? They yeah. they spent millions of dollars that prior to it being purchased by the New York Times. It was free. There was no data collecting going on whatsoever. But because of its popularity, obviously, New York Times went to the people who created Wordle and said, you know, we got a... 10, 20, 30 million dollars here. Yeah, what did they buy for I again? Don't know. I can't remember. It, it was, it was, it was, big it was box, right? the person made this over a weekend. I know. I mean, I know. Mm. There are all kinds of knockoffs coming off now as a result of that. But, you know, now that the New York Times has got it, they're going to monetize it, right? So now they're putting like ad trackers and people like Google now have access to the information, <laughs> right? So it's, I mean, to a point, it's too bad because it, it was a cool free app that was doing no data collecting that people loved. But obviously, people wanted to monetize it. So you're now the product, right? Well, when you buy it for multi-million dollars you can't you have to make your money back somehow yeah, prior to that though this was actually a game that you could play where you weren't the product i think there was like no, some there data. wasn't there was not wasn't. at all none zero huh. zip zilch right a huh. bunch of researchers looked in it and found absolutely nothing was mm -hmm. going on this guy just created it this person created it just for fun right and so there was no data collecting nothing going on but that, so it was kind of cool, right? But now that it's been sold, just a heads up. They're collecting data. Yeah, I mean, that's to be expected. To be expected. <laughs> Next article. So Facebook <laughs> uh, staff are now known as MetaMates. Oh, you know what that reminds me of? Mini me's. <laughs> what, little, little, little tiny zucks? <laughs> little zucks. Little zucks. Little mini, little mini me's. Oh, give me a break, right? <laughs> Uh, boy, so they're, they're no longer Facebookers. They are now MetaMates. Oh, so God. because Facebook is now Meta and now the staff are MetaMates. There's other corporate jargon that was in this Facebook all hands on meeting. I wonder if they're going to wear little sailor suits, right? Get it? MetaMates. Meta -mates. <laughs> right. yeah. Shipmates, MetaMates. Anyways, uh, the internet's having fun with that name oh, I bet because they it's, are. A, it's a terrible name to call your staff. Oh, God. Yeah, MetaMates. Oh, God. Anyways, Mini -mini. moving on from, from that uh, little <laughs> quick hit. Um, <laughs> Probably one of our bigger topics for today. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. U.S. Senators introduce the Kids Online Safety Act. Or I got COSA. some thoughts on this one as soon as you're done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there was there was COPA, which was made Child in, Online Private Personal Privacy Protection Act. Yeah, right? that was COPA. made back in 19 something or other. Yeah, it's yeah. Old. So this is kind of like a, a kind of like a refresh that they're kind of introducing, introducing reboot, not fully acted yet, but no. it is being introduced. Yep. Uh, here are the highlights. Requiring social media platforms to provide okay, younger users. Take a deep breath. Users. Take a deep breath. Here we go. Take a deep breath before you read them all. Options to protect their online information. Yep. Disable features yep. that would cause them addiction. Yep. Okay. Uh, and opt out addiction. of algorithmic recommendations. Addiction. Okay. So a um, couple things mm. on that on that first note. Um, how old are you? Set it to 17. Yeah, you can always lie, right? You can always I mean, lie. That, that they, the Wait, people I, lie online? I know, and I know, I know. I, and not just teens, but also adults. <laughs> Hi, I'm a 23-year-old young person looking to date, and they're actually 45, right? Like, adults Pe lie as people well. People But, you know, when it comes to the apps like this, like, we know a ton of kids who are under the age of 13 or are on TikTok, Snapchat, you know, yeah. Discord, and you all have to be 13, right? So, you know, you just moved a little down. There's no age verifications. But yeah. continue. Uh, and then disabling features that would cause them addiction. Like, okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to, like, addiction. maybe they should reword it to like excessive problematic behavior. usage no call it what the research calls it problematic behavior right yeah. like let's let's stick with you know this whole issue of addiction you said it best in one of the uh, programs that we teach is you know addiction kind of is is it kind of shames right when you think addiction you think substance abuse and well, stuff, right? so that's 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 a big problem right now in academic research yeah. is that there are groups that are kind of keeping addiction in the substance area but um but yet the DSM-5 in North America doesn't recognize it as addiction. It recognizes it as a problematic behavior, right? So yeah. let's call it what it is. Rather yeah. than rather than um, stigmatizing young kids going, oh, you're addicted to a phone, which immediately you think addict, you think drug addict, alcohol, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like, so let's stop stigmatizing. But anyways, so. So, I mean, it's interesting that this potential <laughs> law has that word in there. Like, how are they going to measure that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's that's, that's going to be the, a, a problem because... You know, that, that is a potential workaround. I better figure out how to put a hypodermic on my phone so I can, you know. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, the other issue, who's going to police this? 
You know, here's, I think this is the cart before the horse. Hmm. Because I think what should happen, to be very honest with you, I think the model for looking after issues such as this is Australia, the e-safety yeah. commissioner, the e-safety office, right? And the commissioner that they have there where they have a whole agency who's dedicated to this kind of stuff to police it. And when they see it, they act upon it. So it's yeah. great to have rules and regulations. But in place. senators are not going to propose no. something that's going to put more tax dollars into another agency because yep. that's going to potentially increase taxes and all that stuff, which is not going to get them reelected. There's been and some all that whispers stuff. that here in Canada, they are maybe looking to Australia's model as something that they want to implement here. And, and I I'll be honest, I hope they do. I see that more likely here in Canada than the U.S. I hope they do because the the Australian model is 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 the gold standard in my opinion, right? Like it, it's great to have laws, but if they're not enforced, then they're impotent, right? Like you need to have an enforcement arm to deal with laws and regulations and that's what the e-safety commissioner's office in australia does and they also they also have to help to enact and change and make amendments to law based upon what's happening right mm -hmm. like so i mean it's it's a it's a step in the right direction uh but uh you know yeah so in addition you know the other highlights are creating accountability for social media platforms I to act in preventing and mitigating content that could be harmful and what including if they don't Content such as gambling, alcohol, yeah, self-harm, substance abuse, eating I agree disorders. With all that. Yeah. Um, now, again, w w what are the parameters for that? Because right now, social networks do do that. Yeah, and who's going to enforce it? What yeah, if no. I'm a social network outside the U.S.? Now what are you going to do? That's the other thing. Like, right. this law won't apply. But then, yeah. like, but then they'll say your app can't be in the U.S. and they have to block them. But then they're going to the China model, which... Or the kid just uses a VPN. Or uses a VPN. Right. Requiring social media platforms to conduct annual independent audits aimed at assessing risks to minors, compliance legislation, and whether they are taking meaningful, meaningful steps to ensure that harms are prevented. I don't disagree with any of that. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is who's going to police it? Who's going to enforce it? And then providing academic researchers and not profit organizations access to critical social media platform data sets to foster research on safety and well-being to minors. But obviously, they're really hesitant to do that because a lot of these platforms have their own secret sauce when it comes to their Or they're AI. just encrypted data. Right. So. Which, that will then be the whole, you know. Yeah, but in order for a researcher to look at it, you need access to it. And once you have access to it, you're revealing your special sauce, right? Yeah. So I would imagine these big platforms would be kind of hesitant about doing that. Yeah, but but that means you would also have access to your competitor's secret sauce. Yeah. Which, if everyone is public, that kind of removes the... If everybody's in the same sandbox playing yeah. together. Right? But what's interesting about this, and that I can definitely see happening, is that social networks are pushing against this, going, your government wants us to share your information with researchers and not-for-profits that we have no control over. Mm. Which is going to be not a good thing. That that is how I see social networks, you know, pivoting this and going. We'll have to give your data over to the government. Mm. Do you want that? Mm. I, yeah, I can definitely see that. I happening. don't. I don't disagree with the 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 bones of this legislation. Mm -hmm. right? I think the bones of this legislation are are pretty sound. The challenge is in who's spirit, but you know. Yes. What if a young person changes their age and lies? Right. Guess what? People lie online. Number two. The thing about addiction, how are you defining that? What are the parameters for that? And show me the evidence to prove it. At that as well. Or maybe you should rename it. But right. again, what parameters are over excessive? You know, if there's a student who spends eight hours a day on the internet doing homework compared to eight hours a day playing games, like right. wh what are your parameters? Uh, and all that stuff. And, and how then, yeah, the last one is about, you know, giving all your data over to the government. Well, n researchers, researchers and not profit organizations. Right. Again, Who's who? Who's allowed? What kind of data is it encrypted? Is it non encrypted? Right. So, the spirit's good. Yeah, the bones are good. I don't. There needs to be a lot of like ifs and then statements. Yeah. and I think also it's being politically driven as well, right? Like, well, I mean, there's no doubt about it. But it's I, <laughs> any legislation that yes. aims to per, that aims to change internet is always clouded in the protect the kids category. That's true. That's true. Which honestly, if a kid changes their age of seventeen. All this is irrelevant. Again, don't get me wrong. I think, like you say, the spirit and the bones of this legislation makes a lot of sense. But to me, who's going to enforce it, right? That's that's the issue, yeah. right? The only way that we've seen right now in the world is the China model, which every citizen is given a unique ID and you have to log on to the internet with your unique ID, which will never happen in North yeah. America. 
It won't. So that's the only way you can possibly have reasonable ability to control kids' online activity. But what we can do is start to control the, the big vendors, right? And so the way to do that is to kind of look at what Australia has done. Like, I do yeah. believe that they've kind of found the answer. They've, I, to me, Australia with the e-safety commissioner's office is they've found that balance, right? They really have. Yeah. And so that's, I would agree. that's what I think. That, I think that's probably the best model that we have so far right. as an example. Yeah. Beyond going to all, you have a unique number. Yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone wants that in no, North don't America. Want don't want that. TikTok can circumvent ah, there you go. Apple and Google privacy protections and access full user data, according what? to two studies. Really? Um, yeah, interesting uh, piece of uh, research done. Um, By two independent groups, right? Yeah, yeah, that looked at TikTok's code, and a couple things became apparent. So number one... They examined how the app collects user data, mm -hmm. uh, such mm -hmm. as their device ID, mm -hmm. uh, clipboard actions, and conceals data being made available to users. Right. So what the research found is that there's an ability in TikTok that can kind of identify a person's user ID, device ID, which once an organization or marketing company knows that, all privacy measures are kind of gone. And right now in app stores, like Apple, for example, there are policies that prevent apps from doing that. TikTok's done something very interesting in that they're- Because they're app, different, right? They program their app untraditionally, where their app functions more like a web browser. Uh, so all the code uh, is being pulled from another server, TikTok servers. Right. So like, most apps when you right. make an app you submit it to the app store with all the code intact and that's be, and that's one of the cool things about tiktok because it the because it's more web-based you can use it both on a laptop or a pc as well as mobile it's extremely user-friendly uh, to access on many platforms which makes yeah. sense web apps have had a bad rap. bad ex, bad rap bad experience because they've been pretty clunky and they require yeah. other downloads yeah, yeah. um TikTok is a very, in my opinion, is a very effective and efficient web app. Now, question, yeah. what kind of data are they collecting? Like, should, I be, concerned, should so, I be concerned? Should I be concerned about the data that's on my phone? Because I got a ton of. Again, it's only looking at, you know, device contact information if the app's been allowed to have access to Which that. Which you have control of. Yeah. Your device ID and clipboard actions, the so copy and pasting things. Okay. So, so it'll track if I click on a, what if I'm off the app then it will still has the ability to see what i'm surfing and what i'm doing potentially right potentially yeah. it, again Interesting. it's a lot it's a lot more uh, it's a lot more complicated and it, it simply tracks everything but essentially the main component of the research was the device id okay was being able to identify your device id which you can't do in the app store but because their code is being pulled from another server because it's a web browser um it kind of gets around that so here's my question there's there's been a couple of other people in our field who are saying get TikTok off of your personal phones they're collecting everything that you're doing on your personal phones omg collecting your credit card numbers you know all that kind of personal stuff is that true well i mean it could if you're copying and pasting your credit card number and all that stuff maybe you could then see that if the app is open in the background or running in the background which you may not know if it is or not which could potentially happen or i mean now would you trust facebook on that's your phone? that's my next question really is it different than facebook it is. so tiktok has stated that although the app can do that it doesn't mean it is doing that yeah but should we ever trust these big vendors can you big, trust facebook uh, but that's my point my point is is these guys or promise Google? you the world but at some point in time researchers are finding out that what they've said is not necessarily true mm -hmm. so is the better approach to tiktok just saying hey listen once you put on your vice the reality is they could be collecting all kinds of information that you're totally unaware of potentially Potentially. But I, think, I guess that is... And didn't you say, too, that they, the researchers found that the code can be changed on the fly? Well, yeah, because traditionally how apps work, you submit a code to the app store, it right. does its checks and balances, and then it's when you want to update the app, right. you essentially update a brand new version of the code. Right. Because TikTok is more of a web browser. Yeah. The code can be changed at any time, at any moment. 
Interesting. Well, yeah, and it's an interesting way of getting around the limitations that TikTok has by dealing with the App Store. And the, rea the, the reality too is it's a free app, so they got to make their money somehow, right? So they're collecting data, much yeah. like Facebook, Instagram, Disc, all the other free apps, because you're not their customer, you're their inventory, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's TikTok. Now, having said that, we have said that we don't think TikTok is an appropriate app for those under the age of 16, right? Like we, because of the way that the algorithms work and, you know, although TikTok says, you know, if you go in and put your age between 13 to 15, it immediately locks down all these things. But as you said in an earlier segment, there's nothing to stop a team from going, oh, TikTok, uh, yeah, um, 18. Right? Because yeah, you, no... yeah. You just change the, right. and which leads into the previous story about the age verification thing. So, I mean, because I asked that question, I think I mentioned this last show where I was in a, I was in a online uh, training webinar and uh, being put on by people who represent TikTok, and they were talking about all the, and TikTok has some of the best privacy and and safety and parental of any app that's out there. Yeah, I mean, privacy is in question in regards right, to this, right, right, right. but but I mean, it doesn't mean they are doing but that. But their their parent their parent functions are just phenomenal, right? Yes. Like they're good at what they do. But I asked the question because I, I and they said they're doing a lot about verif age verification checking to make sure that they are who they say they are. But my, my question was to them and they never answered it, which was really interesting, was yeah, well, that's great that you're doing it. But the reality is if, if a 13 year old lies about their age and says that they're 18, then is your algorithm going to push them information that is not appropriate for a 13 year old? And they did not answer the question. They kind of, they kind of spinned it a little bit to say, but yeah, but we're doing age verification. That's not my question. Obviously the answer to the question is yes. Well, and, yeah, I mean, and in fact, we know the answer is yes, right? Yeah. And that's where parents come into play as well. Like parents, do you know that your kids have got, who's 13 or 14 have got TikTok on their, on their phone and is the age they entered the right age, right? So I, again, mm -hmm. I don't think we necessarily can put this all on the platform, right? We parents have got to start parenting. Having said that- Well, I mean, if you're a 13 year old or a 10 year old, you go to Google, you type in something inappropriate. Is this Google's responsibility to verify your age every time you go to a yeah, Google I know. search bar? I know. I know. No, of course not. Having said that, I do think, and that's what that COPA thing that you were mentioning a little earlier, I think we do need to hold the feet to the fire of these big, big multimedia agencies, right? right but they now. can only do their job Correct. if age verification is based off a government system. Well, it's kind of like, you know, can a car company prevent a 13 year old from getting into a car and driving away with the car? No, they can't. Well, and there's been a number. Well, you can't buy a car if, if without your license. They no, can't. but, but kids can still get into a car and drive away in a car. Oh yeah, like if right. parents leave their keys. Exactly. And, and that, yeah, we've seen that. It comes down to, we have. There's that one story of, of, a, of a kid who learned how to drive on YouTube and drove to McDonald's or something. Yeah. I was like, because like, they learned on YouTube. I know. So, I mean, I, yeah. Uh, so anyway. Now buying a car, yes, you would have to submit, you, you, they check your ID. Yes, for sure. Which again, is based off a government system. Right, right, right. So right. that, the, yeah. So, from a privacy standpoint, what do you think? Is it okay to have TikTok? Would you recommend that a, an adult have TikTok on their primary phone? If you would also have Facebook and any other social network on the phone, then it's probably fine. Okay. But there's going to be a risk. Yeah. Right? I there's mean, going to be a risk. Sure, we know this about TikTok, but do we know what other sneaky method Facebook's using? No, we don't. Or Instagram or Discord or Twitch uh, or YouTube or yeah. anything like that, uh, right? Google, so, other Google apps. Yeah, other Google so, apps. I mean, Will TikTok change this? They might. They've certainly changed their stuff previously because of pressure. Yeah, once the light is shined on it. Right? Yeah. So. Or will Apple interpret this as a violation of their policy? Yeah, interesting one. Yeah, interesting. I just thought it was very timely. It was, it's a good one to talk about, right? Because, you know, uh, two years ago, it was all about TikTok is taking all the information, giving it to China, right? Remember remember the whole thing around? Yeah, I mean, that's and... that's still in question, yeah. uh, although most TikTok users are in North America and right. they're more beholden to North American interests. Right, right, right. Uh, even because the app is banned in China, as it is anyways. I know. So, but it doesn't stop potentially China from collecting personal information on everybody else around the world either, right? I mean, I mean, assuming that is, I mean, unless I see official documentation that yeah. that's happening, I mean, I think this gets into the tinfoil hat area where, you know, how do you know Facebook doesn't have a secret deal with the Chinese government and, or aliens or aliens? Like <laughs> how, how do we know? We don't know until we, somebody figures it out and shines a light on it. Right? Yeah. And I mean, Facebook, 
and I've said this in, in way in many shows is you know Facebook is not innocent. No, this is Facebook has been around much longer and has been exploiting much more worse things and to get their position in the position of power they are right now right. that they can afford to take a hit. Yeah, they, can. they can make their app more private because they exploited people to get to that point with metamates. Now they have metamates, <laughs> yes. So, I mean, see how I segued back to the first story. I'm yeah. pretty good at it. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't take what you will. TikTok collects information. Obviously. Just remember, we're not their customers. We're their inventory, right? Is so. it using unique strategies to get information that's beyond Apple's policies? Yeah, of course, because this was revealed. Right. But don't think any other app's not doing that, yeah, right? For sure. Other apps have an interest in your data. Right. So TikTok may change this. They may not. I hope they do. Uh, maybe Apple will reinterpret their policies to have this as a part of that because now the pressure will also be on Apple to go, hey, Apple, this app is circumventing your policies sneakily. Right. Sneakily? Sneakily. <laughs> sneakily. Sneakily. Oh, my God. Uh, sneakily. 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 All right. That's my word, that's word a, of that's, the day. That's a good way to end the show. Okay. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Bye. Sneakily. Sneakily. <laughs>